then I need you to open your mouth. Don't do it for me. Do it to the God of Abraham, to the God of Isaac, to the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Raise your voice right now. Praise. Praise the name of Jesus. I dare you to praise the name of Jesus. I dare you to run in. I tell you to run in. Praise God with everything you have. Like the dew in the morning. Like the dew that panted for the water. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul. My soul cries out to thee. My soul cries out to thee. My soul cries out to thee. Out to thee. Yeah, wrap me. Somebody worship him. Come on. Hallelujah. Worship him. Come on. Worship him. Give him the fruit of your lips. Come on. Give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hey. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God. You're worthy, 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 come on, hallelujah. I wish I had some worshipers, come on, hallelujah. God, we praise you, hallelujah. We move, God, move by your spirit, hallelujah. We worship you, God. so good to us. You've been so kind. You've been so merciful. Hallelujah. My soul cries out. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Wrap me in want them to wrap want to be wrapped in the arms of Jesus hallelujah God we praise your name Lord hallelujah 
Hallelujah. He's been good to us. I said he's been good to us. He's been good to us. He's been merciful. He's been kind. He's been compassionate. For his compassion faileth not. And great is his faithfulness toward us. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we give you glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. The highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, open your mouth. Come on, bless his name. <laughs> Come on, bless his name. Yeah. God is able to do. Come on. Open your mouth and give him glory. Yeah, yeah. Open your mouth and give him glory. Hey, you're the best. Come on, say it to me. Open your mouth and give him glory. Hey, you're the best. Come on, say hallelujah. You got a right to praise him. Come on, put your hands together. You got the right to praise him. You got a right to give him glory. Come on, put your hands together. You don't know what it took for me to get here today. You don't know what it took for me to get here today. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes. Yeah. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes. Yeah. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes. Yeah. Hey! 
somebody, come on. God did it. God. God did it. God did. God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. Say God did it. God did it. God fixed it. God fixed it. God fixed it. God fixed it. Say God fixed it. God fixed it. Say God fixed it. 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 Say God do it.
foot stomping, tongue talking, tongue talking, Holy Ghost Church, Holy Ghost Church, hand clapping, hand clapping, foot stomping, foot stomping, tongue talking, tongue talking, Holy Ghost Church, Holy Ghost, we are hand clapping, hand clapping, foot stomping. Come 
on, clap your hands, open your mouth. I feel the praise. Enemy is under your feet. He's under my feet. Under your feet. He's under the devil. Ho, 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 ho. Under my feet. Oh. He's under my feet. 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 Under my feet. He's under my feet. Under my feet. Hey. That's a good place for him to be. That's a good place for the enemy to be. That means you're victorious. Say it. That means you are a winner. Say that means it. You've already won. Say you it. have a right to shout Say with it. the voice of triumph. Say it. testimony because some of it we're not privileged to tell you but the part that you do know you ought to be giving praise to God I told him this morning come on in Sunday school see you wasn't there come on here when I was dealing with anxiety you was not there when I would wake up two, three o'clock in the morning and the devil would tell me, you getting ready to die. You was not there. So I don't expect you to praise God the way I praise God. 
because your story is not my story but as long as you give God glory okay because he brought me out of a horrible pit you don't know I'm telling you I can understand why the writers said something they're lawful but they're not expedient sometimes you can't tell church folks your testimony because they'll never let you live over it Okay, you ain't got to talk to me. I'm just trying to help you. You weren't in the car when the devil told me to drive into the ditch and kill yourself. Yes, apostle. Come on here. Y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> I'm not talking about stuff that happened 50 years and 20 years ago. But how about the stuff that just happened about a week ago? When the devil said just press on the gas. They ain't going to miss you anyway. But I had to speak to myself. Oh, I tell myself, be encouraged. The devil is a liar. All right, come on. You know the problem is everybody can't handle your testimony. <laughs> and that's why we can't tell it to everybody. But I'm telling you, the enemy is after the saints of God. That's why you praise him every chance you get. Oh, he messed up yesterday. So what? <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. We got a preacher. The problem is folks ain't found out what you did. Come on. <laughs> But Jesus knows and sees everything. <laughs> and that's why I'm not trying to be phony for nobody. I'm going to give him my praise. Go home and deal with my demon. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. I'm going to deal with it. Because I know there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. I'm just waiting for y'all to stand up because we can get the preacher up. But there's power in his name. Hey, hey, hey. Whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord. Why don't you try to call him right now? Jesus. Allen, something about the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. If you can just get to know the name of Jesus, God will give you the power to overcome every demon that's been assigned to destroy your life. The devil's not going to stop coming for you. So I, I just want you to understand he's not going to stop coming for you. But the Bible said with every temptation he does give and make a way of escape. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love, oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love, you just don't understand, hallelujah. It is the sweetest name I know. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the woman of God.
it is the sweetest name. Oh, how I love. She is the executive pastor here at the Tabernacle. She is the woman of God, amazing woman of God. I present to some and introduce to other our pastor, Pastor Patricia Bethune. Receive her in Jesus' name. Oh, how I love. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. It is the sweetest. I'm stuck right there. Come on. Sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love.
oh God, the road that you were traveling down has now changed. All because you called on the name of Jesus. I would have taken my life if I didn't call on the name. Here's the sweet. Somebody in sort of praise right there. Yes, God. together for the Lord. There's something about the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, there's power in the name of Jesus. In your darkest hour, you can call on him and he'll be right there to your rescue. I don't know about the friends you may call. They might miss the call, but Jesus never misses a call. Every time I call on that name, my son, he answers my call. He pities every groan. My God. Y'all know that groan that when you can't utter out the words, that your pain and your trouble has superseded your vocal cords to, to try to form into words what you feel. But the... Mm, <laughs> he knows what that means. Others around you might not understand that groan. But he pities every groan. I love the name of Jesus. I love the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. Hallelujah. It's the sweetest name I know. Grab your Bibles and go with me to a familiar scripture. I'm not going to plan to be before you long. No longer than the Holy Ghost allow. I just want to talk to you about the power of prayer and let you know that prayer still works. Look at your neighbor and tell him prayer still works. Prayer still works. When you don't think that it look like it's working, girl, prayer still works. Look at your neighbor and tell him, believe me when I tell you, prayer works. Believe me when I tell you prayer works. The fact of the matter that I'm standing in this building today is a testament that prayer still works. I'm going to try to move through here real nicely. But I tell you, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, growing up, I used to hear that always told, you know, from, for those of you that are, you know, come from the, the Pentecostal apostolic background, I'm not going to say it's not in other denominations, uh, but I know from where I grew up, I can only talk about where I came from, that I used to hear that, it, and I thought it was just a cliche in the church world. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. Then the next sister or brother would get up and say the same thing, and I'd be like, we already know what they're going to say. But let me tell you something. When you get older, you get wiser. 
and you've been through some stuff. Listen to me, saints of God. When you've been through the storm and the rain, sickness and pain, depression, anxiety. When you hear somebody saying this day, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my very soul cries out, Hallelujah! 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 I ain't got the voice, but Hallelujah! 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 And make it just a session for me! Hallelujah! The presence of the Lord is on me. Hallelujah. It says, My soul cries out. That's coming from a deep down place. That ain't coming from no surface level demons. Surface level circumstances. My tire was flat, and somebody came by and gave me some air. That's how I almost lost my life. And God did it. He stepped in the lick of time. He showed up. Right when I wanted to give up. Right when I wanted to throw in the towel. Right when I wanted to kill myself. Right when I wanted to give it all up. He came in and stepped in. In the midst of the rain, 
in the midst of everything that you're going through, prayer still works. When you want to give up, when you want to throw in the towel, and God is still calling you to do ministry, when he's still calling you to do all that he's called you to do, prayer still works. That's all right, let him listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, let them listen. If they got to pull up on the sidewalk, let them listen. They'll hear something that'll change their life forever. Prayer still works. Acts the 16th chapter, verse 25. And put your finger over in Psalms 34. And I believe 17. know about you <laughs> but we're living in some unprecedented times what that simply means is times that we've never seen before if you don't believe it turn on your news if you don't believe it walk outside your your door raise up your window and hear the anguish that is in the streets I mean, I was literally doing the work of the Lord on the field, doing the work for the Lord, visiting the sick and shut in. And as I was on my way, heading back to this side of town, I got an alert on my phone that said 15 shots rung out on Morris and Shelton. I said, Lord, that's down the street from the church. 15 shots rung out. Then I don't know if y'all that watched the on-scene media. He seemed to be everywhere at all times. He began to get up there in the video that was submitted. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. And then you tell me how they walked away. You tell me how they walked away. 15 shots rung out. Three guys jump out of the car and just immediately begin to ring shots you tell me how they walked away somebody said that's nothing but God there are people dying every day the city as of right now is under great mourning for the loss of many loved ones for the loss of so many that have gone on to be with their Lord uh, you won't get me to lie and say they went to be with the Lord because I don't know your lifestyle I don't know the you behind the scenes I don't know the you that we don't see in church I don't know the other lifestyle that you might be living but God knows tell your neighbor God knows God knows and that's all that matters that's all that matters it doesn't matter what you think of me, minister. It doesn't matter how you feel I'm living. It doesn't matter. But what really matters is what God thinks of me. How he feel I'm living. How he feel I'm doing and completing my assignment. That's the only thing that matters. But I come to tell you that prayer still works. Some of us are in the church today because of the prayers of our grandmothers. Our mothers our pastors, our fathers, our grandfathers, they have prayed. Somebody prayed for me and had me on their minds. Acts the 16th chapter, verse 25. It simply says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them somebody said the prisoners heard them the prisoners heard them <laughs> see one thing you got to understand that when you go through some of these prisons that we the believers are living in there are going to be situations and things that are going to hit your life that you can't have a quiet sedity praise. 
You can't have that praise. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, no, you're going to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, the type of praise that can be heard from afar off. That if I got out here right now and started screaming at the top of my lungs, from here to the boulevard should hear me. Because of why? Because of the urgency that they can sense in the midst of that cry. Psalms 34 and 17. This is the scripture that the Lord had with me all week long. And it simply says, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Somebody read that with me again. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their trouble. That next verse simply says, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. That word contrite simply means broken. Are there any broken people in the house this morning? I know we look the part. We look good. I had to take the lashes off, y'all. Let me tell you something. Whenever you get into the presence of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord is moving, Everything got to come down. Sometimes you got to come out your shoes because your praise got to go forth. There are a lot of us in here with a broken heart on this morning for many reasons. I just come to tell you that prayer works. Father, we bless your name, God, for another day's journey that you've kept us. We will not fail to recognize you in all that we do. Father, we come, oh God, to speak to your people on this morning. Quickly, just to let them know that prayer still works. To tell the saints, don't stop praying. For the Lord draws nigh. Don't stop praying. He will hear your cry. Father, we ask you to touch us right now. Every hung down head. Every cast down spirit. Every God. Every person under the sound of my voice. God, we pray right now that you have your way, oh God. Let the devil be horrified. God, you be glorified. And you let the people of God be edified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you quickly that prayer still works. I don't know about you. There are just some things that we, the people of God, is living in and we're living under. I asked the woman of God the other day, I said, how are you doing, woman of God? And she looked as though she had everything, you know, looking to par, looking to par. She was, oh, how you doing? God bless you, Pastor Bethu. I said, bless you, woman of God, how you doing? She looked at me and she said, I'm doing well under the circumstances. <laughs> I said, well, blessed be God. I said, um, I don't know what that means, but I do know what this means. I'm over. I'm on, on top of the circumstances. We as people of God, the Bible says we are overcomers by the words of our testimony. When you speak defeat, you will stay defeated. If you expect to ever come up and to ever be anything in this world and in God, you got to speak. Oh God, you can't dwell on where you are and how you currently feel. Because right now, if I go off of how I felt, evangelist, uh, I would have stayed home and sent y'all a message to say, praise the Lord, we'll be virtual this morning. Because my body was tired. My back is still bothering me. But somebody shout, I still love the Lord. I was riding in the car this morning. I told my sister, I said, listen. I said, if I didn't love God, oh, if I didn't love God, I said, I would have been from home. You doing the service like most people from live or streaming or however, from the virtual sanctuary. But I just believe that this morning, God deserves an in-person praise. Let me say that again. I said, God deserves an in-person praise. There's a praise that you have in the inside of the house uh, that you don't have outside. There's an anointing that is carrying in the house than it is in your house. I'm 
bless God because we are living in some unprecedented times. And if you don't need God, if you didn't think that you needed God before, oh God, I know you can see that you need him now. Oh my God, every minute, every second, every hour of the day, I sat there and I began to talk to God all week long. And I said, God, what are you talking about prayer still works? He said, can't you see prayer still works? I said, yes, I see your hand. I see you things moving. He said, I just come to let you know. Tell my people prayer still works. Don't stop praying. Oh God, when we was coming along, <coughs> y'all pray for me because I'm under restraints with my voice. But I believe in giving God everything. When we were coming along, there were the old cunning mothers in the church. I don't know about y'all. Did y'all have some of those growing up? The mothers that you walked in the church and you had on something a little too tight, a little too short. Uh, baby, come on, come on, come on over here, baby. Come on, come on. And they did it with such grace and such sweetness. Oh, I don't know about the mothers of today. The mothers of the day look at you and roll their eyes. The mothers of the day say, oh, well, hold up. Wait a minute. I heard the Lord. The Lord said the mothers of the day got on the same thing you got on. But what do you do when you, when you look in the sanctuary for the mothers and the mothers are no longer there? I came along when the mothers of the church began to pray. When we walked in the sanctuary, prayer was going forth. When we walked in the sanctuary, there was no talking. When we walked in the sanctuary, the prayers were like songs. I now understand in my adult years what they talk about in the Bible when they pray that they made songs of melody. I now understand where the, where the, the artists get their songs from. It's from the word. Look at your neighbor and tell you got to sing the word it's the word that is going to bless you it's the word that's going to keep you Paul and Silas was in the darkest time of their life they were thrown in prison for doing the work of the Lord they were thrown in prison for casting a demon for casting a demon out of a child out of the long young woman doing the work of the Lord. They were cast out. Reason being because she had brought great means to them for making money. When you start to mess with a person's money, you're going to mess with something else. You're going to see the person in a different light, from a different perspective, because you're messing with their means and opportunity, their means of wealth and growth. Oh God, Paul and Silas cast a demon out of a young woman that brought great means to the community for some, some political folks. And when you cast out a demon, I can no longer get the credit huh, for what she was doing. I happened to be at a conference one year. I'm not going to say no names. And the preacher was known for casting out demons. And you remember evangelists. We were all there. And the preacher got up and they began to cast out a demon. And the presider was sitting in the pulpit, you know, very distinguished, full of power, full of power. And all of a sudden, a, a cry came out from the back of the auditorium. <laughs> One of those demonic, uh, I don't know but y'all even know what that is in this day and time, because they walk around here every day like that's nothing. But the demon came out and it manifested itself as the man of God was preaching. All to find out that it was a set up. It was paid for to do it. This is the day and time we're living in people of God. But the presider over the organization or the, the ministry that was being launched sat there in the pulpit very dignified and looked like what was full of power and he had just sat down from speaking very eloquent words and, and all those good things and all of a sudden this demon popped out I would come here elder sit in this chair real quick he sat he was sitting there across your leg looked very dignified 
Go ahead, you, you, prestigious, there you go. And his armor bearers and everybody standing behind him. And I mean, they're standing there. And all of a sudden, the demon manifested itself uh, and was coming towards the pulpit. Jump up, elder, and run behind me. Run behind me. He jumped behind the armor bearers. Get behind my back. back. Put your head by my lower part of my back. He was behind the armor bearers, ducking for cover. And everybody in the audience was like, What happened to the power? What happened to the eloquence of speech? The demonstration of the Holy Ghost that just fell. Oh God, he ran for cover. And this is the hour that God is bringing forth now. All those that are professing, that were professing power. Oh, in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's coming to fruition now to really see what you possess. But these men of God possess power. They were bruised, being and slain. Oh, God, they were bashed and thrown into prison for casting out a demon in a young woman. Immediately they were thrown in. Oh, God, and as they got in there, they didn't do what we as saints of God do. We look better. Let me look at the, my horizontal counterparts. I don't know why we in here. How we got here, man. Man, how we gonna get out? You got some people? You got somebody that's gonna pay some bail money? Oh my God. I don't know what's going on. I know one thing, you better give me my one phone call. Cause I got one person to call. We go through all of the elements of the natural world. They didn't do that. I read in my Bible with my eyes that was just checked out. And it said, at midnight, Paul and Silas pray. And sang praises unto the Lord. Do you possess enough oil to change the atmosphere? That's a good question to ask. Do you possess enough oil to change the atmosphere? God is birthing in this hour some more women, mothers from back in the day that knew how to pray. You know how I know? Because I became one of them. Oh my God. I used to be one of those evangelists. You called for prayer, that was my cue to go. Oh, that was the time to go to, um, you know, back in the day was penguins across the way to go get us a sub and meet in the dining hall to eat. And when prayer was over, we came back outside and got in the presence of God. And we, oh, now we got something to shout about. Watch those folk that got a shout but ain't got a prayer life. Hear me, watch those folks that got a praise, but they ain't got no prayer life. When I need you, you can't even cast out a headache. You can't even stop the blood from flowing. Anybody can stop a bloody nose, just hold the, just hold the vein. You ain't even got power to stop that. In this hour, God is squeezing. Oh my God. He is squeezing us to become more. God is birthing in this hour a generation of praying women as there has been a decline in the ministry. Oh, God, of praying women. We're more concerned now. Oh, God, listen to me. We're more concerned now about what's going on on our corner or our neighborhood, on our jobs, in our sister brother's lives than we are about the world, in our own lives. People have lost their consciousness. Let me say it again. People have lost their consciousness. Not only of life, minister, but also of God. God is telling you to do one thing. You telling God, I'm going to do another. Oh, you know you are bad, member Jammer, when you can feel you got power to tell God what you going to do and when you going to do it. You a bad member, Jammer, huh? when you can get in the face of God huh? and say, I got this. Oh, yeah. You ask people, huh, how you doing? Well, I'm doing well under the circumstances. I said, baby girl, I don't know about that. Because from when I look at it, we're supposed to be on top of the problem. The problem's supposed to be under us. 
this is the place in time where you don't tell, let your problem tell you what it is. You tell your problem what it is. You introduce your problem to God. Paul and Silas took their problem to God. They didn't wait for the soothsayer. They didn't wait for the next door prisoner. Reaching through the bars to tell me what, what. You got some people coming through. Tell them to tell my mama to get me out. No, they prayed and they worshiped. In the darkest time of their life. More women today are trying to stay young these days. We're talking nipping and s- Yeah, I said it. We're at the place now we're talking and nipping. Increasing and squeezing. Wearing clothes that reveal what you have. But cause you to lose what you possessed. And now our young women are trying to be just like them. Young women, I'm looking at them today. I told my granddaughter she wanted some nails. She eight years old, told me I want some nails. I want to be just, oh, I want this, you know. No. You got to tell them in this hour, where are the living examples of godly women? Where are the standards of Christianity? Where are the praying mothers, the women of the church who don't stop praying until they saw results? I remember my mother, my grandmother didn't stop praying until we came through with the Holy Ghost. I wanted it so bad. Have you ever been to, see back in the Pentecostal church, we did this thing where we had tarry service. And they had the tarry service where they went into the back room, on the altar call room. I don't care if it was, it could have been the dining hall. It became the prayer room. My shot, it became the prayer room. Oh God, that could have been cooking fried and chicken sandwiches, but it became the prayer room. When you walk in there one way you came out another I wanted to be in there so bad I wanted to be in there so bad y'all forgive me it's no shade to those that came up in Baptist Presbyterian or any other religion or denomination I can only talk about where I came up in Um, I was only a little bit Baptist (laughs) I was just a little bit Baptist and that was those Sundays my mother allowed me to go to my friend's church. <laughs> because there were Baptist church <laughs> that believe in hand clapping, foot stomping, and tongues talking. Hallelujah. We don't discriminate. Because see, one thing we have to understand, God didn't come with denomination. And I know I'm going to lose some Pentecostal apostolic folk right there. Because the word of God, he didn't come with a denomination. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Oh my God, but I went in that back room and I kept trying to each my way to the seat when they were calling. And every time that woman of God came out and went right around me, went to the next person. I got in that seat. She went to the next seat. I said, Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. I don't know about this generation where they're not asking for the Holy Ghost. No, they're asking for the next fine, finest thing to come walking in here so they can look pre- prestigious. I can wear, I can care less about my clothes. I'm worried about my soul. I finally got in that room. And oh my God, to my surprise, it caught me like a ton of bricks. The power of God that was in the room. Oh, God, the woman of God that knew how to get a prayer through, that knew how to pray until they saw results. They knew how to pray until the yoke that was on you broke. They knew how to pray until it was destroyed. I came out of there. and I I couldn't hardly talk in English for talking in the tongues. I sat down next to my pastor in the pulpit because then they had you to go tell them. They had to tell them what you had. Oh, God. And if she didn't feel it, she said, go back to that room. But when I walked up in the pulpit, I sat down next to my grandmother. And I said, no, no, no. Oh, God. I couldn't tell her I had the Holy Ghost. I had the shower by the power of God. I come to tell you.
tell you, prayer still works, y'all. Prayer still works. In the darkest hour of Paul and Silas, they had what was called the prayer room. Oh, God. They transformed a jail cell into a prayer room. They turned it into a sanctuary for the Lord. I don't know about you, but wherever your prayer room is, I don't have one that's called the prayer room. I got a room that I put prayer in. And every time I walk in there, oh my God, I can feel the presence of the Lord. On my weakest day, arthritis acting up, asthma acting up, lupus out of control. I just walk in the room and I can feel the presence. I can feel the presence of God waiting on me to come visit him. See, the problem with the church today is we still got religion. We don't have relationship. See, when I was growing up and doing that dipping out during the prayer, I had religion. Because, see, religion is going to cost you something. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Religion keeps you away from the real thing. Religion is the counterfeit to what a real, true relationship possess. Religion makes you think you're saved. Pastor, religion tells you you saved just the way you are. Don't listen to them people. They don't know what they're talking about. You can serve God just the way you're doing it. You can praise God today, smoke tomorrow. You can praise God today, drink tonight. You can praise God today and sleep with Sally and Jew and John. That's what religion will tell you. But when you got relationship... I'm trying to move y'all. Religion tells you I come to church when I want to. I come to church when I feel the need to. This is what one young person told me. And that's what they did. I come to church when I feel the need to. I said, oh, okay. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to let you do what thus saith the Lord, your God. Because let me tell you something, my God is going to tell me what it is. When I don't feel like getting my little lazy tail up, it's going to tell me, get up and go, girl. Because there's something in the house that you need today. I don't know about you. I'm glad I came this morning. I got up. Oh, my God. Oh, I took the first thing I saw in my eyes and grabbed it. I said, it's going down today. Because I just feel a need to be in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my God. But when you have a relationship with God, relationship tells me, oh, well, I can't miss the church today. I need to be there today because I feel God is going to do something. See, when you got relationship, you can smell when God is in the area. You can sense when the presence of God is getting ready to do something. I don't know about you, but my stomach was bubbling all morning. I sat there. I got up and I came in here. And I told Pastor, I said, Pastor, go invoke the presence. Go invoke the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I just need God in my life. I don't need not one idle moment. I don't need not one minute of just sitting down doing nothing, lallygagging and talking. I need the presence of God Talk about God You got my attention Talk about the goodness You got all of me Talk about it I'll stand up and testify Relationship Paul and Silas had relationship David had a relationship Those are just a few men of God That had a relationship He said if you call on them If the righteous cry The Lord will hear them Oh God And save them out of what? All their trouble He didn't say let me see which one He said all their trouble Paul and Silas turned a jail Into a sanctuary Into a praise prayer room At the darkest time in their life Most of us would have got up Called our friend Talked about how bad it was Talked about how they did him Talked about how they lied on me Talked about how they stabbed me Talked about how they lied on my name But this hour I got to get up And tell you In the midst of all that My God is still good In the midst of all that I still will praise him Relationship It calls for you to fast and pray 
on the days dedicated by the church and then some relationship calls for you to attend Sunday school and Bible class see relationship it calls for you to study your word when you got downtime relationship calls for you to pay tithes and offering as it is a must and God is the first thing in everything no longer are you having options but it's mandatory for my spiritual upkeep a consistent life of prayer oh God will set the spiritual life around you oh God to be consumed by the fire by the fire that's possessed on the inside you now become contagious evangelist oh God you get around others and they just become contagious oh God it's something about when you begin to pray oh God you get the power that you that is needed to ignite something on the inside of your life that touches somebody else's life that when you open your mouth and say when I think of the Something catches your spirit and pulls you in. You become contagious. And everything around you will be infected by the power that the Lord has placed on your life. Paul and Silas said, I get to a place now that I got to call on Jesus. I got to call on him because he answers prayer. See, the problem that we have in this hour is we're more afraid about what we see with our natural eye than what we need to look in the spirit and see. I understand what's going on around me. I understand the headache that I see. I understand the chaos that's going on. But I choose to see and believe God. The scripture <coughs> says it best. I don't know about you, but I've been in a place where I prayed to God. And I started praying one way. And my words twisted. Have you ever prayed to God? You know how we do. We pray with our hearts. Come on, let's be real. We're humanistic. Oh, Father God, touch the pain that I feel, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, Sister Susie did me wrong, God. Oh, Lord, you know what she did. Oh, she told Brother Jane all about it. Oh, God, now they're not talking to me, God. Oh, Lord, I thank you, God, for blessing me to stand under this pressure because Mary Sue stole my money out of my purse. Oh, Lord, and she stole my boyfriend. Lord, we thank you because I know he's coming back home, God. Send him back, Lord. Have you ever started out praying your foolishness? Because that's what I call it. Foolishness. And all of a sudden, God twists your mouth. Romans, Romans the 8th chapter, the 26th verse says, The Spirit maketh intercession for us as we know not what we ought to pray for. The Spirit of the Lord comes in and takes over and it changes your language. Look at your neighbor and tell him there's a language to deliverance. Oh, there's a language to deliverance. Come talk to me. I'll tell you about it if you, don't, if you ain't never experienced it. There's a language to deliverance. I'm moving. I just want to come and talk to y'all this morning. Because the Lord want me to remind you that prayer still works. Don't stop praying, saints, because it don't look fruitful. Don't stop praying because it doesn't look, it looks a little barren. Don't stop praying because folks walked away. Oh, my God. I come to tell you, let the folks walk away. God got a replacement. Let the folks talk about you. Even your family members. Even your Let's say it together. Even your family members. The Lord styled the church as a family. The devil knows this. He knows this because he lived this. And that's why he comes the way he comes. This, there is no new tactics. He's not doing anything different than he was doing before. The same thing he did to Paul in silence, he's doing today. 
it just looks a little different. But scenery is green. There ain't no stone and dirt. You got on hills, pumps, and stilettos. You got on weaves and eyelashes and nail polish. But the demon is still the same. He's still seeking whom he may devour. You can't con control what comes out of you when you start praying. God knows what we stand in the need of. I can't give you everything. I got to give you a little nuts. God knows what we stand in the need of as we're broken and we're fragile individuals. Uh, oh, God, we all look together as a, oh, a good little looking object. Uh, oh, God, y'all got on y'all best. You look good. Uh, you look good. Uh, you look good. Uh, you look good. Uh, but on the inside of us, uh, we're messed up. Uh, we're struggling from some things. Uh, we're going through. Uh, there's some dark times in our life. Uh, but can you do what Paul and Silas did? Uh, take what was done to you uh, and turn it into a prayer. Turn it into a praise. Uh, Turn it into giving God glory out of it. I'm getting ready to run. I just want to remind you that prayer still works. Healing for our minds. God said prayer still works. I know there were some prisoners in there that didn't have the mindset of Paul and Silas. You know I know that because I see it in the church today. I see it in the world today. You got a good group of folk. They believe God's going to do it. Oh, God, raise your hand and praising God. Then we got a group of folks over here. I don't even know if he's going to do it. We got this around us. They had that around them. But they didn't let the circumstances they were under or they were in to stop them from being on top of. Bible says, you, you can see over here. The scripture says whether there are two or three, that's what it is. Whether two or three are gathered together in the midst, he said, I'll be there. And I don't know about you, but I believe I got more than one or two believers in here today that can testify that God is still answering prayers. I know I got more than one believer in here that can say that prayer still works. The fact that I'm standing here is a testament that God still works. Oh God, because if it were left up to me, when I turned 18, I would have left the Lord. Because I felt as though I was missing out on some stuff. Oh, God. But thanks be unto God for the prayers of the moaning women. Oh, God. He got to the place where my grandmother would praise the Lord. Save them. Save them for real. Oh, God. Save them, God. Deliver them from their self. That got me for real. Because, you know, I thought I was saved. Oh, God. Wearing the long skirts. Coming to church. Everything wearing white and long ain't sanctified. It's just articles of clothing. But the lifestyle you live behind the article of clothing is what makes the difference. And I got to go. I just want to let you know that in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your rain, understand that God still hears your prayers. Don't stop praying because it looks dark. Don't stop praying because it looks bleak. Don't stop praying because folks walked away. They're not going to believe in your dream. They're not supposed to. He didn't give it to them. He gave it to you. Preach the word. As I get ready to take my seat, I just want you to understand that prayer still works. How I know? Because I'm a living testimony. The Bible said these shall return to you for a testimony. I'm a living testimony that prayer still works. How do you know? Because when I was driving on the car and on the boulevard, when I should have took my life, when the devil said run right into that pole, I should have, should, could have, would have, but I didn't. Because the prayer that mama prayed, the prayer that your grandmama prayed, it stopped you. If you don't believe 
if you don't believe that prayer works, why don't you ask Joseph? His brothers threw him in a pit, sharing the dreams that God gave him. They're going to overcome him, and he's going to reign. They didn't like it. I said they didn't like it. They were threatened by the power he possessed uh, and the submission they had to give. Uh, his brother sold him uh, for 20 pieces of silver. Uh, they threw him uh, in a pit uh, and sold him. Look at your neighbor and tell him, but it didn't work. I come to tell you that God works in crisis and chaotic situations. Look at your neighbor and tell him, oh, the God I serve works in crisis and chaotic situation. Joseph was proof of that. It was chaotic. He was going through crisis. His father gave him a beautiful coat. A beautiful coat. He was thankful of the coat. And they were hating on him because of the gift. The problem is, others can see your anointing, but you still can't see it. Can I talk to you for a quick second? Others can see your anointing, but you're still struggling to see it. Others can see what you possess, but you still can't see it. Others are still trying to call you into greatness and pull you out of where you are, but you still can't see it. Joseph was trying just to live his life and tell of the goodness of the Lord, but the brothers saw the goodness and he didn't see it yet. He didn't see it yet. I know I'm going to get some big dignitaries and theologians that are beg to differ. He didn't see it yet. Because sometimes if we would have saw the anointing and the glory that God has placed on our lives, we would have shut our mouths. Because let me tell you something. The minute you surrender to God, you become a living target for the devil. They sold him over to the Islamites. And at the end, he became governor. He was the second man in charge. He was the second in HNIC. He got to the place where they had to come and bow before him. Don't tell me prayer don't work. You can't tell me they had him in jail. And you didn't do nothing. This is evidence that you did something. Prayer still works. It might not look like it's going to work. KJ, I'm getting out of here. You don't have to believe me. But if you don't believe me, ask David. Let me tell you just a little bit about his apprenticeship under Saul. He got to the place where, oh God, uh, this is where I talked about the scripture where you got to sing the word. He got to a place where David said, oh, the Philistines, everybody didn't want to go kill the go kill Goliath. It was just too big for them. They got to a place where David said, what is y'all talking about? Let me go and see. He was already mad that he had to stay behind with the stinking sheep as it was. I want to go out there on the field with my brothers. His father finally gave in to him and said, you know what? Let me let you go on out there, boy. I think you're going to be the saving of all of our souls. He gave him the food and told him to go check on his brothers. He went down there to check on them. David had another mentality. He had the mentality that if it's God, I live. And it's for God, I die. What are y'all scared of? What are y'all backing down from? Because the devil looked bigger than you? What in the world are you doing? I'm ready to fight. They gave him a weapon tree that wasn't proven, that wasn't tested. David took it all off. David said, I go in the name of the Lord. David picked up five smooth stones. David gave it all he got when the battle was over. When the battle was over, 
David got up and went on about his business. Folk didn't like it, y'all. Folk didn't like it. David, there was a group of women. There was a group of women that went home, portrayed them back home, that started singing. I could just see him skip to my loo. Saul killed his thousand, David killed 10,000. Saul didn't like it. Saul said, the devil is a lie. I'm the king. See, this is when you let position go to your head. This is when you let position feel like you got a position to stand up. Saul didn't like it. Saul immediately put out a rivalry for David's life. He started plotting and planning. David had to run. David said, Saul said, I'm going to put out a play, a plea, and a plot to eliminate David. So he began plotting for every opportunity that he could to kill David. David eventually, oh God, was forced to get out there and live a fugitive life for 10 years. Let me tell you something, saints. You might be the next man in position, but it might be 25 years before you get there. Stop running at the positions. Stop running after the power. Let the power run after you. Let the power run after you. David had every opportunity to assassinate Saul multiple times, but he refused, knowing that the throne is not his to take, but it was God's to give. Psalm 75 and 7. I love it. I found this scripture this week that I didn't know was in the Bible. You know how you hear people talk stuff, preach stuff? But you ain't read stuff. Did you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> Psalm 75 and 7 says it. It's God that put it down one and put it up another. So why you got your hands in the pot? David respects the authority God has given to Saul. When Saul acts were dishonorable. I don't care what the leader may be doing. It might not be right, but you ain't God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, you ain't the one to put them in their place. That's the problem with us now. Assassin little, little lay members that got a little bit of juice. Got a little bit of juice and now we feel like we got the power. Power to correct the leader. Power to correct the pastor. Power to set the elder down. I'm still talking about prayer works. You know how I works because it got me right. Because I thought I was one of those that wanted to correct everybody that didn't do what they was told to do. I got this saying in my one of my guest rooms. I, I, it, it says, "I'm not the boss, but I just know what you're supposed to be doing." <laughs> yes, I do. I can show you my phone. I'm not your boss, but I can just I just know what you should be doing. David respects the authority. Even with Saul, I'm closing y'all. But it's at times, it can be frustrating when it seems that it's taking too long for the much needed transfer to take place, for the authority to come your way. But true authority cannot be grasped, it can only be granted. True authority cannot be grasped, it can only be granted. Oh God, that reminds me of when I was little, we used to dub each other, you the princess for the day, the queen of the day. You dub them, you only can be granted access to the power. Oh God, Paul and Silas were granted the power when they went through in prayer. And what happens? Oh God, let me tell you something. God, whenever God wants something done, immediately. Whenever God wants something done, Elder, let me help you. We talking. Whenever God wants something done, he doesn't do it progressively. He does it immediately. I might want to come out of my pain 
in my trouble right now. But God said, girl, this thorn is in your side for a reason. You might want to come out of that pain. But God said it's working for you. You know why? Because it's pushing you closer to me. It's pushing you closer to pray. It's pushing you closer to the throne of God. It's pushing your relationship from being, oh, just a one night stand to now, let me marry him. Because some of us are still dating God. And that's why we can't experience the full power. But when you get down on your knees in prayer, you begin to open up the dialogue with God. Because prayer is simply a conversation between you and God. Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, I don't know where to go. Lord, I don't know where to turn. Lord, I ask you to help me. God, I'm praying for your mercy. And before you know it, the intercession comes. And it takes over. Your language change. Now you're saying, God, I got the power to stand. God, I got the power to endure. God, I got the power to take over the world. God, I can preach this thing. God, I can do it. God, I got the means and the support. I know you're backing me. And as I take my seat, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe what I just gave you, then you can ask me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm living, breathing proof of what the Lord has done. Don't tell me what God can do. Don't tell me what the power of prayer won't possess. Oh, let me tell you something. Oh, God, when you get through the lying and the talking about you, the stabbing in your back, the scandalizing of your name, I was trying to run of those that I was trying to run down and correct everything that I knew was wrong. God said, what are you doing? He said, what are you doing? That ain't the assignment I gave you. That ain't the, the power that I gave you to possess to do. I got to the place that I'm taking my seat. I got to the place where I said, Lord, I trust you. The Sunday school on last Sunday said, why worry? Why worry? I got to the place where I sat there. I began to get annoyed by some of the things that I was doing. I began to get annoyed by some of the things that I was telling myself. I began to get annoyed by the things that I saw around me. I was always told from the womb, you, we didn't want you. I was always told, oh, you wasn't good for anything. The spirit of rejection was deposited in me before I even came out. So when I came out, I began to walk and operate in the spirit of defeat oh I got to the place where no matter what I did wasn't good enough no matter what you did no matter how you dress no matter how eloquent you spoke you were still going to be nothing good for nothing didn't look like nothing legs of sticks body of bones you wasn't going nowhere ain't good for nothing it'll be good if anybody wants you it'll be good if anybody look your way don't nobody want to hear you. You ain't no preacher. I say you're right. I'm not. I didn't say I was. He did it. You got to get past people. Get past what they said. Get past how they look at you. Get past what they talked about you. Get past it. say this and I got to go. Come get this mess. Let me tell you something. I got to the point. I said, Lord, I don't care what they say. I don't mean I know I'm not for everybody. I know I'm not for everybody. But I know I'm from somebody. I might not preach like you. Good. I wasn't trying to. I might not quote the scriptures like you. Good. I wasn't trying to. I got a memory problem. You trying to dress like me. No, I wasn't. I just threw on what I had. Good. I got to the place. I said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you prayer still works. At the beginning of May, I went for my annual mammogram. Oh, God, prayer still works, y'all. 
the beginning of May, I went for my annual uh, mammogram. And when I went, you know how you walk in there strutting your stuff? You already know what the verdict is. You already know everything's going to be all right. I walked in there, good evening. Went in there, took off, did all I had to do. Got in there and squeeze and press and push and this and that. I left and I came on home, went to my, my husband was cooking out in the yard. Came on home, going through life as usual. Still in pain from all that pushing, pressing and pushing and squeezing. Let me tell you. All of a sudden, two weeks went by. I was like, ain't nobody said nothing. And I said, you know what, whatever, I know it's good. All of a sudden, my doctor kept calling. All of a sudden, Yale kept calling. I'm like, what are all these strange numbers from? I had my phone set for unknown numbers with an unknown name. You don't get an unknown answer. But I was sitting there, y'all. Let me tell you the power of prayer. When you got the real thing, as my grandmother would say, God rest her soul. I was sitting in the spirit of the Lord said, go into your robo kill. I went in there, and when I pulled it up, it says, number could be possibly Yale New Haven Hospital. I said, well, let me call it back. I called the number back. The lady answered. I said, hi. I believe I missed a call. Several calls from you. About 10 to be exact. The lady said, what is your name? I said, Patricia Bethune. What is your telephone number? I gave it to her. She said, oh, yes, we've been trying to call you. Oh, we need to set up another appointment. I said, for what? She said, because the doctor just wants to set up another appointment. I don't have, I'm not at liberty to give that information. Then what you calling me for? All of a sudden, as I take my seat, all of a sudden, I made the appointment. And of course, you know, they booked to capacity. So now I got to wait another two more weeks. I sat there. See, this is us as Christians. What the devil? I need this to get in there quickly. I need to be in there immediately. But the Lord was giving me time to pray. The Lord was giving me time to work. The Lord was giving me time to fast. All of a sudden. Oh, my sister. My appointment came. And I didn't tell everybody. I just told If you could see how many that is. Because I didn't want nobody to worry. I said, let me see what it is first, and then we'll talk about it. I went to the doctors, and we went in there. Appointments at 9 o'clock. I didn't get seen until almost 1030. I sat there in agony. I sat there, and then the Lord said, utilize your time wisely. I begin to sit there, and I begin to pray. I begin to call on Jesus. Everybody's sitting around looking. Here I am. There were women in there with bald heads, scarves on. There were women that were sitting there going through radiation. There were women sitting there going through chemo. And I sat there, and they were just so troubled in spirit. I'm saying, Lord, touch them. Lord, go with them. Be a fence all around them dry it up God whatever it is I'm not even worried about me I'm praying for them I get there they call my name here we go again the pushing pushing the squeezing and least everything all about two or three more times then they came out sent me in the waiting room now we're gonna let the doctors see if we need to go for a further ultrasound I sat there and the Lord said you know you're gonna need an ultrasound I sat there I said Lord I'm just praying that they just let me go all of a sudden she said come on we're gonna need to do the ultrasound we went for the ultrasound I did the ultrasound not once not twice three times and every time when they finish they went in there and they sent the things off to the head radiologist to review all because when I the original test results reviewed that there was an eight millimeter size abnormality in my left breast oh my god oh god so I looked it up y'all know how we google and self diagnose ourselves I pulled it up on google and I said god that's big that's something to be worried about now here come the devil you know you're gonna need chemo you know you're gonna need radiology you know you're gonna need this oh you're gonna lose all your hair you just grew it back he began to whisper I laid on that bed and I began to pray the woman did it so many times and I didn't know what she was doing 
I sat there and I began to pray. Prayer works all. I began to pray. Oh God, from the time they told me to the time I went in, it was four weeks. I sat there and we prayed the whole time. My husband is a great man of faith. He sat there, he said, I don't know what you're worrying about. He said, everything's going to be all right. I said, okay, I know I believe it too, honey. <laughs> I ain't been through what he been through to get his faith. I've been through what I've been through to have my faith. Let me tell you something. I walked up in that room, laid on that cold table, and I sat there and I began to talk to my father in prayer. As I began to lay there, each round of that ultrasound, a different person each time. Then they sent it off to the head radiologist to read it that he wanted to do one. Let me tell you. On that fourth ultrasound, he said, you can clean her up. He said, and, and grab your things. So I drive up and I sat up. I'm sitting there with the, the thing across me. I'm sitting there, Pastor. He said, hi, I'm Dr. So-and-so. He said, I'm, nice to meet you. Sorry, it's under these conditions. He said, but I just wanted to tell you that the reason why we brought you in is because we saw an eight millimeter abnormality in your left breast. And that's why we were checking so intensely because things can hide behind tissue in a woman's breast. As we sat there, he began to explain all that, Pastor. I'm still here praying, God, you in control. God, I trust you. God, I won't worry. God, I won't fear. I don't know about you. While they're talking, I'm talking. Hallelujah. I'm sitting there. If just let me tell you. The man of God said, he said to me, he said, Pastor, oh God. He said, Patricia, let me tell you why we did so many times. He said, the reason why we did the ultrasound so many times, he said, it's because what we saw originally the first time of the eight millimeter size abnormality in your left breast is no longer there. You can't tell me that prayer don't work. What the devil meant for evil, God turned it. He worked it in my favor. He moved it out of the way. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? While others might have been sitting and worrying. I began to pray. Prayer still works. My family, for those that knew, they were sitting there waiting. My sister said it was a long time, almost four hours of sitting there, of agony and the unknown. And they were getting worried. She said, I'm about to get up and go back here and ask what is going on. My sister went in at nine. It is almost 12 o'clock. She said, but when she looked up, my daughter was on the phone. My husband didn't text and call. By the time, he said, I'm just checking up on you to see where you are, how you doing. He already knew. I'm sitting there. And when I walked out, the lady said to me, she said, after the doctor said, what we kept looking for was not there. He said, I just had to see it with my own eyes. All of a sudden, he looked and he said, ma'am, he said, you're fine. I'll see you next year. He said, I just want to tell you, he said that you don't have to worry. It's already gone. And we just see, you know, four little uh, lip nose. They happen on their own. They do their own thing. Nothing to worry about. I said, well, they can go ahead and do their own thing because I'm going to do my own thing. And so you know what I said? We give thanks and praises to God. I stood up off the table. And I said, I give all thanks and praises to God. And the lady in the room said, Amen. You can't tell me huh, that the circumstances are under. Huh, you're not standing on top of. Huh, and God won't get the glory. Even in your circumstances, God will bring others to bear witness. My sister had her people from her job, minister, praying. One don't used to believe in God. She's now a, an atheist. 
don't believe in God. Believe in witches and warlocks and all, with all this other stuff. Room is dark, everything black. Let me tell you how God will use you to get the glory. This is how I know prayer still works. That woman of God, I was sitting on my bed on Tuesday. Tuesday morning, up early, thinking and giving God praises, like Paul and Silas did. I said, Lord, it's midnight, and I just want to thank you. I sat there. He said, draft a message. I drafted the message. I'm going. I drafted the message. And then when I got up this morning, that morning, he said, send the message, because she's there with the women of God. I sent the message, and I sat there. I was getting ready to wash my hair. The Lord said, wait. I waited. All of a sudden, my phone rang. It was my sister calling me. She said, I wanted you to hear this message for yourself. She sat there and put the woman of God on the phone. The woman that's an atheist came to the phone and said, hi, little sister. She said, um, hi, bestie sister. I just want to say to you that because of what you've been through, we just thank God that everything worked out. She said, but what you went through has restored my faith in God. You can't tell me. That God don't work. God will use your circumstances to, to get glory. To bring praises back to God. Prayer still works. I come to tell you, everybody stand up. I just come to tell you that prayer still works. I don't care how dark it may be. Minister. I come to tell you, I don't care how dark it might be. You got to understand that God hears, God sees, and God knows. And everything that's on the inside, God understands. I come to tell you, God understands. Come here, Deacon. Oh God, I feel you. Oh God. Oh my God. Ah, Jesus. Can I get every believer in the house to stand? You have to understand that everything that looks good and glittering ain't always good and golden. I came here to